fear. Fear Net Radio. Anyway. It's it, You know what? It does. Yeah. Uh, Jason is still connecting to his audio. He's. It can take a while, right? This technical difficulties is on brand here. It's so that that's Chicago good. Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, have, we have Starlink in Chicago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Starlink. <laughs> Wow, I, Elon's probably oh, transferring those funds away from that. <laughs> Twitter, you know, Twitter doesn't work. Starlink doesn't work. My 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 Tesla is out in the yard because uh, it doesn't know where it's. It keeps thinking I'm in Nebraska, and so it puts the heat on. And I'm like, I'm in Texas, <laughs> dumbass. That's what a Tesla is. He's a Damn bad right. kitty. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to sit here and talk about how robots are going to rule the world. You know, we're here to talk about the beer business, and we're actually here with some pretty heavy OG disruptors, I would right. say. And I've known some of you guys for since you got started in 2005. Of course, we're at, with Fusion Projects, makers of, of course, Four Loco, uh, Four Loco Pregame. Uh, you've got Mamitas, Tequila Seltzer. Yep and uh, basic vodka among other brands and i know we're going to hear about something special coming up uh but we have samantha catalina who i believe is vpo marketing yeah. and we yeah. have jeff wright co-founder and ceo and jason freeman also co-founder and ceo and uh i'll just start you know first of all welcome to beer net radios where all your dreams come true so uh j this is the time okay <laughs> <laughs> get it out now Get it out now. Pinnacle, pinnacle of my career. Pinnacle. Yes. Of my career. <laughs> not yeah. those, not those national talk shows you guys were on. You know, <laughs> yeah. not that. This. No, no, this Way is... bigger than Saturday Night Live. Well, hell right. yeah. hell's yes. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna hand it off to Jim, but just one, one quick uh, that I want to, like I said in your intro, you guys really were the first disruptors, and you know, you pushed the envelope, you got kind of a little bit swatted back. We all know about the Four loco story and uh, with the caffeine and blah, blah, blah. And it seems like now everybody wants to be a Jason Freeman and a Jeff Wright. And uh, what what do you guys think about that? What, what, what What's going on out there? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know if everyone wants to be a Jason Freeman or Jeff Wright. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's flattering. Um, look, I think there's a lot of opportunity in the industry, right? And when you look at what what's the easiest path to entry and what people want, they want they want flavor, um, they want taste, and they want ABV. Um, and I think those things, if you get those combination right, um, uh, and connect with the consumer on a on a digital social level and be part of you know part of their their lifestyle, um, I think there's there's big opportunity for disruption. I think there still is. I think we have something coming that's going to disrupt as well. Um, and it's exciting. It's fun to be in this industry. It's better than selling cars or, or tires or, or even, even tech in my, in my opinion. Um, but you know, we've been doing this for 13 years now. We, we stay low, we stay under the radar, we keep our head down and just, uh, continue to, to make good products. And that's what excites us. So, yeah. Cool. All right. I, I want to hear about that next big thing, but first I have to ask kind of what Harry asked, but in a more pointed way, like, so I came on to Beer Business Daily when you guys, the year that you guys spoke at our summit, and I think it was 2011. And you guys, that was, if I'm remembering correctly, the year that you guys really had had that tour of all the talk shows and Saturday Night Live and that, like that kind of stuff, because Four Local was huge, right? It was still had caffeine. Um, and then, of course, like a year or two later, the feds came in and took the caffeine out of it, right? But are you guys kind of like, going, what the hell's going on right now? Because it's almost like it's come full circle. Now soda, which is of course, largely caffeinated Coke and all that stuff is getting into bed out. are you guys like, what's going on? Like, what's the lesson there? Like Harry said, I mean, do you think for Loco would be even bigger if it still had caffeine in it? And what's the takeaway? Jeff, what do you think? You know, I, I don't think it, the for Loco, I mean, I think we built a, a, an incredible brand and um, with or without the caffeine, we've been successful. The only thing that happened with the, um, you know, with the ban was the not notoriety in the press that we got. And it mm -hmm. wasn't only domestically, but it was internationally. And that really opened up the opportunities uh, across the globe. I mean, um, Four Loco currently has outside of the U.S. a 2% share of the RTD category globally. 
Mm -hmm. um, so without that publicity, without that notoriety, um, consumers outside of the U.S. probably have never heard of Four Loco. So, I mean, yep. it it was also a positive, even though it cost us a hell of a lot of money. Um, That's yep. interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you got more yep. free press than probably Bud Light. Uh, yeah, you know. yeah. No, but I think I think to add to what Jeff's saying, I think the brand would still be around. Would it? Would it maybe a little bit bigger? It's it's possible for sure. But I think what we did is uh, you saw open the floodgates. So competition has come in. And one thing's been constant in that C store set is for Loco. There has been many things that have come and go. We always say this at our meetings. There's always a new boogeyman that's going to end for Loco's reign. Um, it, it never does. Um, it's out there. It's always in there. It's consistently in the set. <clears throat> uh, I think we've innovated well. The flavors have gotten better. Um, and, you know, it's just it's part of pop culture. Um, it's part of, you know, history. Everyone wants to make a, a documentary on it and a movie on it. We've, we've kept away from that. Maybe we'll do something in the future and tell the story. Um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a brand that's out there and it has staying power. And I think the, the distributors see that too. And that's why they, they can need to focus on it. So what you're saying is there's a Netflix special in the works, right? <laughs> <laughs> from the producers of Pepsi, where's my jet? Right. <laughs> I didn't say saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, you know, talking about the business outside the U.S. versus in the U.S., how's the business with OXXO? Is that like its biggest channel in the world for Four Loco or? Uh, actually, it's not. So Mexico okay. was, was our, our first launch outside of the U.S. Ox mm -hmm. has been a great partner. We are currently in, you know, 15,000 stores of their 20,000 throughout Mexico. But from there, it was basically it was our launch pad. So we're in 38 countries throughout Central and South America. We've got a 42 share in Peru, a 27 share in Colombia. We're the fastest growing RTD in the UK and Ireland. So um, you know our business it internationally is 20, like 25 percent of our US okay. volume, and it's okay. growing at 100 percent year over year. Interesting. So, and, and that's the thing with Four Loco. I mean, you know, this is the 11th year of Four Loco. Um, you know, where where it's going to sell in the current package, it's everywhere. Um, you know, um, and so you know, switching other packages, Four Loco is what it is. I think for us is continue to innovate in the U.S. on on flavors, which which we we've, we've done. Um, this year we had Four Loco USA was one of the innovations. It was the number one the number one new FMB in the in the segment. Um, and it's done very, very well. You know, on top of that, we, we've done a partnership with Warheads Candy. So there'll be a Four Loco Warhead Sour flavor coming out next year, which the, 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 you know, the, cat, the, the retailers are, have been really excited about. So we think that one's going to even be better. And we're seeing all these, these kind of cross promos outside of alcohol, in the side of alcohol. And we thought this one would be, you know, perfect for Four Loco. So. Well, let me move beyond Four Loco really quickly, and then I'll uh, pass the mic yep. off to somebody else. You sent me some very yep. interesting pictures of what I think you might be talking yep. about as the next big disruptor. And But yep. these cans are yes. clever, so let's hear about it. Um, listen, we've partnered with Barstool Sports uh, for the last couple of years. We have a very close relationship with them. Um, they are, as far as 21 to, to 35, they are the most relevant online platform out there right now. Um, their brand power is, you know, is unmatched. Um, and so, you know, we partnered with them with launching Mamitas, Four Loco, Four Loco pregame, and naturally getting close to them. The extension of the partnership was to collaborate, collaborate together on a branded uh, product. And the first one uh, that we'll do with them is called Pirate Water. Um, and it's launching in spring 23. Um, it's a single serve, 10% ABV. We're starting in package size of 16 ounce. Uh, ready to drink malt beverage, and with them we just we we collaborated on on beverage name, packaging design, everything. The plan we're going to be fully integrated into their talent um, on their sites everywhere, and I think it's going to get a lot of you know a lot of awareness. And the the, the 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 product is really good as well. You know, we looked at package size. There's obviously seltzers are in the 12 ounces, locos in the 24. We twisted and the other the other big players. You know, we saw that there might be an opportunity in the 16-ounce uh, single-serve space. Um, everything's gotten more expensive, and we think as, you know, are we in a recession, are we not? I think people are going to be a little more, 
you know, penny conscious. So we thought there may be an opportunity in the 16 ounce with maybe a lower price and maybe a better two for deal um, for people to be, you know, a little more price conscious. So that's, that's kind of in general where it's at, but um, we think the partnership, you know, with four local, it's partnership with an actual, you know, brand that's, that's Warheads Candy. This is a partnership with, you know, uh, you know, presumably the most, the most relevant media platform out there right now. What's the uh, pirate water referenced? Is this, is this completely over my head or is this totally new to world? What, what about, what's the deal with pirates, Jason? Sam, you want to jump in that? <laughs> yeah. So Barstool actually calls themselves the pirate ship. Okay. Uh, so when everyone joins the company, they join the pirate ship. And Dave Portnoy, um, he created a pirate dog logo years ago and still signs a lot of his signatures with that. So pirate themed is very much integral and a part of the Barstool persona. Uh, so pirate water just made sense as a extension of that. Uh, I think the packaging is, is great. And, um, you know, I feel like in many cases, the 21 to 25 consumer, male consumer has been neglected because uh, it's all health yep. and wellness and premiumization. And yep. guess what? Yep. The men nowadays don't, you know, unless it's biohacking or, or working out, they're not into <laughs> health. They're not into losing weight or cutting cal and, and, you know, and, and the other thing is, is that, that, um, that ABV does matter to those guys price. Yes point yep. price per yep. ABV and uh you know all this frou frou yep. stuff has been great for margins but hey guys we're in an inflationary and a recession at the same time some people call that stagflation and you know right. people there's going to be a rush to value and you know yep. I'd like to point out that also your branding is kind of on point <sighs> oh nice <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, like for those that. at home, I'm uh, I'm I'm drinking a liquid death. But you know, this is a That's disruptive. Different. You know, who who thought yeah. that water ha could be disrupted? And look at this water in a can right. and a and death. And you know, don't be scared. Don't be get. Don't be scared, Sam. Yeah. Don't be scared, J Jason. It's just water. <laughs> we love it. We love their branding and the marketing. We love it. So yeah, it's and so, clever. Yeah. And what what kind of pricing are you looking for at retail? Or yeah, where do so, you want to sit so within the? You know. Yeah, so in a, in, a, in a single, the 16 ounce right now is anywhere from $1.50 to $1.75 per can. Um, and we try to get, you know, two to two for three or two for three fifty somewhere in there, depending on the state and taxes um, out the door. So that's, you know, that's that's kind of where, where the price would be. You know, 24 ounce segment with Twisted on fire, us, you know, being in there forever. I mean, single cans now are up in the $4 ranges, you know, when, you know, even three years ago it was, you know, two fifty three bucks maybe. So we think there's going to be some opportunities there. Um, as we get in, we get into 23 to look at smaller package sizes. Um, and then once the brand's established, we'll look at those other packages. Maybe we'll go into, you know, 12 pack variety, which is, you know, if we wanted to go in large format, but we want to establish it in, you know, in the C store independent channel, you know, to start. I, I had a couple questions on convenience for y'all, but I wanted yep. to just give props yep. to whoever struck the Mamitas partnership with. Kayla Presley and Sunday Conversations because yep. that dude yep. knows how to plug a brand. <laughs> uh, I mean, when, he's, and, uh, Jen, when he says Sunday, he's not talking about the day of the week. He literally eats a, <laughs> a, a an ice cream Sunday while he's yep. interviewing people and asking yep. ridiculous questions. Yep. And you ridiculous. never know if they're even ridiculous. in on the troll or not. It's that's the greatest part of it. Right. Anyway, go ahead, Jordan. <laughs> but he gets the famous people and, and, to and, just and, go ahead and plug it for him. Yeah. You know, so it's it's yep. perfect. Um, but on convenience, and you were just kind of talking about this, Jason, um, you know, in IRI scans, it looks like prices increased quite a bit more in convenience than in food this year. So I'm wondering if you see much more wiggle room for price to go up even higher uh, next year, or is it kind of at the breaking point? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting question because um, this and this, this is, at least for us, you know, we haven't been in the industry forever. Um, it's unprecedented and it was uncomfortable in having internal conversations about raising price, um, you know, from the supplier level and then going to distributors and, um, and so, but costs were increasing. We had, we had to do it, you know, we had to do it. I think we've, we've gone up twice this year, which, you know, is unprecedented for us. And there may be another one, you know, um, coming depending on what the, what the market does. Um, I, I wish I had the answer to that. <laughs> you know, it, it's hard to say. Because we are going obviously into to recession, and, and what's the consumer behavior going to be? And I think Harry hit it on the point. There is going to be some calculation, maybe not for everyone of, um, and for a certain consumer is you know what am I paying and what am I getting back for that? 
right? Whereas in the last couple of years, it was just uh, what's what's there. I'm grabbing it. Let's go. I don't really care about the price. I think you'll see some more people, you know, really really taking a look at what they're getting for what they're spending. So yeah. And then uh, another one on just kind of the broader convenience channel is it seems like now like single serves are a point of emphasis for for every supplier, big and small. And given this push, uh, I'm wondering, have you noticed any like big shifts in single serve space at convenience or do you expect to see any, you know, given everyone wants to to come out with a single server, everybody wants to be in this space that y'all have been in for uh, a decade. Yeah. I personally think it's the most competitive segment in the industry today, especially for us. We've got a lot of legacy four loco flavors that have been in these stores for, you know, uh, 10 years plus. And um, everybody's coming out with the latest innovation, latest, greatest in innovation. And what retailers are quick to find out is, you know, our, our VPO on our legacy four loco flavors is significantly better and um, much more productive than a lot of the, the, the new innovation SKUs that they're bringing in. So it's about, I mean, yes, and it's about protecting our space as well as presenting innovation that's going to sell for the retailer. Yeah, and I think that retailers getting smarter, uh, they are because the space is the most coveted now. Um, you know, Seltzer took a hard push into there um, and rightfully so given where, where the industry is going. I think the realization is that, you know, some of the big Seltzer brands are probably more in the variety, the variety 12 packs. Um, and so we've seen that pull off a little bit and less innovation on that side just because of where the category is gone. Um, but what we always say is, listen, rack and stack the brands and the ones that are giving you the best VPO should stay. And usually for local is always in that list. Um, but retailers like new because they want new consumers to come in. Um, and so, but I think the retailer is a lot of more space for the single serve and, and rightfully so, you know, a lot of brands in this category are hot and continuing, you know, to, to fly. So I'm wondering, you know, talking about exactly how competitive everything is in every channel, but like you said, especially in C-stores and how your partners execute in C-stores, are you guys looking to make yep. any changes, any consolidation to your distributor foot? Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, but one of the great things about us starting 10 years ago is, you know, I think we've, we, we got an opportunity, you know, when Four Local was hot to, to really get into markets and find the best distributor, no, you know, no matter what they were distributing. And I think we've, we've done a pretty good, pretty good job of that. Um, and we've gotten great partnerships. And so for us, it's, you know, consolidation is going to happen. I don't think we're looking to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our, our ethos has is, is always been as we serve the distributor, they're our first customer. I think a lot of people in this industry forget that as suppliers, they just try to beat them down. And, and we looked at how we can serve them and, and, and give them things that they want to sell. So our focus is not really too much on consolidation, um, but it's happening itself. So once that, you know, that sale goes through, we do take a second look at the market to see, to make sure we're, we're with the best player. So. How does your network skew right now? I forget, like the mix, is it predominantly AB or? Six, it's or six, six, about 60. Miller Coors. Oh, okay. yeah, Miller Coors, yeah. 40 AB. One of the things that, interests me, uh, you know, about Four Loco, like you say, this, this brand's been around forever. And, you know, a few people have yep. made runs on it competitively, but been pretty much unsuccessful. And then now we have a flood. Um, who do you consider your competitors to be uh, you know, on a yep. brand level? Yeah, I don't. So, so it's interesting. I don't know that we, I don't know that someone comes in and says, I'm going to decide between a, a four loco, a twisted tea or a Mike's hard lemonade or a Mike's harder, right? Those are all there. What we do compete for as, as we were talking with, with Jordan about it, is space, right? I think the consumers are very different for all those. And I don't think they're making that decision at the last minute. I think we have our core consumer. I think all those other ones have theirs for, for a variety of different reasons, but our, our, our battle is not really on the brand side. It's on the space side. And some of these, companies have, have more power from us and we've lost spacings and then we always get them back, right? Because they see that these innovations aren't coming in. Um, but I think generally as you're looking out there, um, you know, our consumers fairly unique and I think they know what they want and I don't think they're making a last minute change when they get to the, you know, to the door. Um, but we compete with the big twisted mics, you know, um, 
you know, that those are the biggest ones that we're competing for space and extra slots in that, in that shelf for. Here, you have another one. Well, I, I just had one question just about uh, uh, social media and, and how it, yep. you know, it's, it's changed and whatnot. And I know there's rules and what, is there a strategy I'm there and is TikTok become yep. more of a part of that? Yeah, so social media is you know one of the most important things within the Four Loco brand. Um, something we track is share of voice, and we track that against the competitive set that Jason just talked about. And quarter over quarter, we look at this, and we're routinely number one by margins. Like we own forty, I think it's forty five percent of the overall share of voice online within FMB is Four Loco. So consumers are absolutely still talking about us. They're searching for us. They're sharing. Um, we're actually launching a loyalty program next year to engage with those consumers even more. And TikTok is part of that strategy. Um, but, you know, we definitely follow guidelines we need to within TikTok, you know, without being able to promote, um, but definitely do what we can there because we know that's where our consumer is sitting. Yeah. I, yeah. I, you got to remember here, we were, we were one of the first, first brands on Facebook, um, you know, years ago. We, um, no, we were on MySpace. On the- <laughs> yeah. No, MySpace, 2005. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, that's why I asked the question because I mean, y'all were the first on all the social media. Yeah, 2005. Yeah. MySpace. Yeah. Hold, hold my four logo. Lighten it up. Yeah. Right. Lighten <laughs> hold it my four logo. Man, um, you, know, yeah, you guys don't market, age. Top of the new thing. <laughs> It's the four loco. It's a preservative. Exactly. (laughs) I definitely have my share of four loco pictures on social media. I'll forward some of those to you guys for posterity or prosperity or whatever the, whatever the saying is. um, I want to switch gears a bit because I think it would be a mistake if we didn't dig into Mamita's tequila salsa a little bit more. That brand is a bigger brand than I realized. It's kind of a top RTD cocktail and scans, uh, like a top 20, I believe, the last time I checked. And it's up triple digits. So what's driving that? And, you know, what do you guys have planned for scaling it next year? Yeah, this foray was was super interesting for us. Um, You know, obviously, everybody saw the seltzer craze and, and tried to jump and throw everything at the wall they possibly could. And get in, get in and, and try to, you know, ride the train. And, and for us, it was like, okay, we, maybe we missed this trend. Uh, um, but what's going to happen next, right? We didn't know that, you know, high noon was going to pop out or whatever, but <clears throat> we looked at premiumization and we thought that that was going to happen, you know, with real spirits. And it's something we always want, the category we always wanted to get into. It is definitely a different game. There's obviously less, you know, outlets available. Um, you know, C-Store isn't the biggest channel. It's large format and grocery, which we we touched before but hadn't really infiltrated so we had to really take a look at strategy and hiring and and have a different approach from from that perspective um i would say i feel like in this these categories rtds now everyone's going really fast not working on the product and if you tried mamitas i know everyone tells you this um it, you're 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 a fan once you try it the liquid is great the flavors are great um they're amazing and the branding is you know we we believe is is on point this category takes a lot of patience um, and working through, you know, the, the spirits go to market is, has its challenges and us being new to that. And, um, we've just been consistent. And as the brand has grown, we've gotten more, you know, stores that come on Publix and Kroger is expanding. And, and so we're really infiltrating and you'll see that, and we're just expanding distribution, but the volume per outlet is continuing to grow as well. And 23 will be, you know, will, will be a real breakout year because we're going to have a real look at real national, big, large format distribution, which we've never had in anything. And I think we're consistent online, the partnership with Barstool and the reason that we're doing the pirate water with them, you know, Caleb, I mean, listen, his interview with uh, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the amount of people that saw that is more than watches an NFL game. Right. And so mommy, this is, and mommy, this is front and center in that. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, you know, really, really having smart and Sam putting together great programs and blocking and tackling for brand building, but also being patient and knowing that you're not going to get the 10 million cases overnight. I think that's, mm-hmm. That's hard for a lot of a lot of new brands to come into. I think that's heartening for a lot of people to hear because we talk to a lot of brands that are like, this is going to get to 10 share. And we're like, you are right, going right. away next year. <laughs> <laughs> if you've right, already right, thought that right. far ahead and that's a guarantee for you, you're not going right. to work hard enough to build it the right way. Right. So um, right. interesting. Does it go through most of your existing wholesalers? Right? Do these guys usually have a spirits license or no? Okay. No, it's mostly through su- Southern, Southern wine spirits. Okay. So that was, another another thing for us we have some of our distributors that have it in some of the states depending on the mm-hmm. state um but mostly through southern wine spirits which you know it's it's um it's it's different than 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 the beer network um and we had a lot of learning to do but the brand 
the brand when, when it's put in the store is selling. So, um, you know, they've, they've gotten on board. Um, we've, we've, um, we've worked, worked hand in hand with them. Uh, but the brand is great. We have a new variety pack coming out based on like cocktail flavors, uh, margarita, spicy margarita, um, you know, Paloma and Tequila Sunrise. So our second variety pack, which a lot of the retailers are picking up, which is, you know, a, a, a you know, a really good indicator for us. Um, but again, it's, you know, everyone comes in, this is like high new numbers, high new, those, that's not even conversations in our, in our playbook right now, right? We're, we're building this thing and we want to grow, you know, hundred percent plus every year and we'll get there. Um, but if you're shooting for that right away, you're going to, you're going to be sorely disappointed and, and out of business. As you you said. run out of money. Yeah. And run out of money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, you- there will be a lot of brands that were introduced this year that won't be here in 2024. I mean, it's just a yeah. fact. Probably, about, yeah. I would say. I mean, yeah. what we right now the run rate's about seventy-five or eighty percent that brands don't last yeah. past two years, which is ridiculous. You know, I was talking yeah. with uh, well, Jordan. And I were talking with Paul Chive at Paps, and you know, he he came. He comes yeah. from the candy industry, and he made a good point. He yeah. goes, you know, yeah. when when Mars came out with Snickers. Nobody came out with Bickers and Chickers and Wickers. Yeah. You know, right, there's right, only right, one right, Snickers, right. and there's only one thing that's even like yeah. Snickers. Like, there's not yeah. even think close. Right. So, right. I mean, they they they're yep. smart, a little smarter. But I mean, you guys are OG. Yep. I got to give it to you. Yep. And and for the for the old folks, that means original gangster. Okay. <laughs> and you're the OG OG. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and you know it, it's uh, the staying power of Four Loco is phenomenal, especially the, the trial by fire. I know we don't want to even go to we don't want to talk about it, but the 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 time that has no name that we shall not mention was a true trial by fire. I hope they make the documentary. Um, I hope whoever's going to make the documentary interviews me. You see how I work myself into yeah, it. Yeah, I like that. You see, Jordan's like, <laughs> do you yeah. like Harvard, that, Jeff? Uh, because I have many th- stories to tell. <laughs> but no, I mean, it really wasn't sure trial by fire. I mean, no, it, it's a remarkable yep. story, and to come out on the other side was was still a very strong brand, and and uh, is remarkable. So I got a tip tip of the old uh, hat to you. Is Thank there you. any uh, uh, final thoughts? We're, we're a th- we try to be a thirty-minute podcast, but you know, Jordan, I, I know. No, you already jumped in. I, I crap. <laughs> I had is gone now. See, so we don't, we did, we don't like compare questions ahead of time, and so I take all yeah, the good ones. <laughs> nice, nice. See? That's not true, Harry. Uh, Jordan and I compare questions because we don't want to show Harry our cheat sheet because he's already going to suck all the air out of the interview anyway. <laughs> he's going to take it. Out. I'm getting better. All right, guys, you are getting better. So we listen, love you, uh, Dad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks for being on. I want to remind everybody that uh, we are in the first week of December. That gives us exactly only one month left to uh, sign up for the Beer Summit and the Wine Spirit Summit starting January 8th, 2023 uh, at the Breakers in Palm Beach, Florida. Not Palm Springs. I keep <laughs> Palm Beach. And let me just point out that. Uh, it's in Palm Beach on January 8th. I mean, do, does anybody really want to be north of uh, you know, the Colorado River or whatever? Because it's going to get out of the snow and into the no, people. Um, what else can I say to plug this <laughs> son of a bitch? Um, uh, oh, wait, I, I've got something. So if we reach a certain threshold, Harry's going to do, we have a bet. We have an internal bet, and I won't say the number. But if we reach that number, Harry's going to do push-ups on the stage and if we don't then i'm supposed to so <laughs> what's what's the over under on push-ups i mean oh, one depends on it depends one. on who's doing it i said <laughs> i had said 50 i had said 50 50, oh, 50. my yeah, upper like body that. my upper body is gotten so bad that putting luggage up in an airplane is gonna, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like asking the old lady can you help me with this <laughs> so i don't know there's gonna be push-ups but i'll you know I got to take my shirt off, right? To do it, Jen? Yeah. The... You can do knee push-ups, Harry. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, I'd love to sit here and talk about jackassery all day, but I know these guys need to go out and sell beer. In the and right we gotta, sense. We got to get out and sell subscriptions. And the right term. Beer, beer is now FMB, Harry. Uh, right. FMB. Back in 2010, yeah. everyone wanted to shun it, but now it is. And even, mm-hmm. even, even the big guys have finally admitted it. 
I know, right? Uh, I mean, Diageo was the worst. It's PAB, Progressive Alcohol yeah, right. Beverage. I was like, oh that, that doesn't even make sense. Uh, yeah, so I'm glad we finally, the industry has come to some senses, you know, and uh, boy, we could do a, another two hours just on how it's changed, and maybe we will someday. So, <laughs> all right, guys, well, have, thank, thank you. you. We're happy to be on. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Good to see you. Have a good weekend. Cheers.